Yeah. Yeah. No. So the, the artists ended up doing a really good job just getting us all the assets on time. I was trying to be a crazy speed demon, like throwing cards and layouts at Brian and you know begging for approval. And uh, when we got the box back, there was like a quarter of an inch off. And as you saw on the left side, it's very particular how the box wraps. And it turns out that uh, the factory went, hey, can we add an extra quarter of an inch? And then they just did it without you know, running it through the team first. Mm -hmm. So one late night, because we were trying to rush to get this done for RTX, uh, Brian sat late, I think it was like nine o'clock at night, you were there measuring the box with the ruler and feeding these the dimensions. Because I actually live in Dallas, and these guys are clearly in Austin and try to convert it to millimeters so that we could get it to China for the next day. Because whenever you send directions to China, it takes almost a full 24 hours because their factory closes at seven in the morning and turns back online at about nine at night. Yeah, so, this is kind of where Zach is like our go-to guy. He's always in communication with them. Miracle worker. It was I need thing. to learn Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like working with the factories overseas, they always have someone there that uh, I make that as a joke. Uh, they always have people on staff who are very, very fluent in English. But um, there is that time delay of getting communication back and forth and not being able to meet with people directly in person raises a lot, a lot of difficulties that you wouldn't think. You think you'd be able to get all this done over the phone or by email, but not being able to be there in person and literally Looking map out us. what your sizes are, what your dimensions are, uh, does make for some difficult process sometimes. And this was the first time, because uh, usually factories give you a template, and we went, here are the measurements, we need a template. And they went, what do you mean you need a template? So we kind of had to make our own template from scratch, and then they said, why are you using this template? We have one. And we kind of just had that, you know, the doing the math person. And then they gave us actually the million dollars butt box, which is a very different size than this. <laughs> we had to go, no, really, we need like this. So another thing that kind of went a little hairy is, can you spot the difference between these yeah, two images? Yeah, the difference. Yeah. So we kind of looked at that and went, oh, well, that's, that's not quite, close. Like it's 85. so close. Yeah. Just uh, the yellow and blues were backwards, and uh, I don't know how you get that across. And then the second time I'm going to be the charm, we got the box we see today. Everything lined up correctly. There's not weird gaps on the back. And it was, I think, one of the first games with the new Rooster Teeth games logo. That was like a really last minute edit, like by the time the game comes out, it'll be here, so. And that was my part of all of this. Oh yeah, and Brian, Brian did a really great job texting me pictures with his hand. And oh, wow, look at this. That's what you have to work with. I'd be sitting there in Dallas, I'm like, I'm touching it. Took a lot of people to make this happen. Um, a lot of testers, a lot of, that's like the biggest thing that works like, hey, what you doing for lunch? Let me take you to lunch. Because everybody's busy doing their normal thing, but we don't have any specific board game testers. Now we have a QA team for Vicious Circle, and they're killing it. Uh, so if I was in a different spot in the process, I would certainly be asking the producer if I could borrow their time. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like so many people work on this, and Megatron always people. So like, uh, do you have any other things you want to say before we start getting some Q and A? Uh, does everybody know here know how the game is played? Mostly. We didn't no, actually talk about how the game is played at all. There's a couple. Okay, there, you a, a couple okay. things are a little weird. Uh, <laughs> so uh, just, just so everybody's aware of what the game is. Um, okay. Are there any more slides to go through? No. Okay. Cool. So. Uh, as we were talking about before, the idea of the game is to create a dueling kind of scenario between two players. And it, it is a game that, even though there are two players involved, it, you only need one game, one box to... to oh, this is the old version. This is the old version. This is the old crack version. Uh, you only need one box to, uh, to, for both players. You only need one deck. Um, so, I, I mean, I mentioned like Magic before, and that's like a whole deck building thing, and like more to play magic, it's like a commitment. Uh, this, you just need one box, and then everybody can play. I mean, there's even a, a four player plus version that you get a couple boxes. It yeah. might be fun. Uh, let me know how you think you have to play this like that. 
Um, but uh, the, the, again, the idea was to create a dueling aspect, which is uh, very much based on, in my opinion, a, a sort of back and forth between both players. So one player plays a skill card, the other one plays a skill card that might counter that one, or affect it in some way, or, or just build up their attack and whatnot. And each, each player builds up their armor, weapon, and skills until a certain point when everybody has five cards on the table, and then all those cards give dice, or take away dice. Uh, depending on what kind of card they are. And at the end of the day, you'll have this huge collection of dice that you can roll, and whoever gets the most successful hits on however many dice they have for successful rolls wins that round, and then the loser loses their armor card. And the ultimate goal is to so remove everybody, the opponent player's armor cards. So like Brian was saying, it's basically your health. You start out with three armors, not come out until you, there's, they no longer have all their armors, and you win. Uh, basically, you're like chipping away at all their defenses until it's just the, the, the soft, vulnerable body. And you, kill them. you know that kind of idea with death battle. Uh, and because the, the general so idea like dual is monsters. in death battle is to take the, the concept of the death battle show is to take two characters and find out which character has better odds at winning a fight. And so I think with dice, essentially what you're doing with this game is to create the better odds for you to win the dice roll off. Um, and each die has a different effect, like the, the, the clear dice is the most basic one, so there's a four out of six chance to get a successful roll. And like the blue dice only has one successful uh, hit, and that's because you get to trade it with an opponent's die. You can take their die, if they've got a green one or a yellow one that you really want, and you play a card with a blue die, you can steal that dice in exchange for the blue one. Um, and like the yellow dice allows you to re-roll. Like yeah, all of them, have a completely different effect. It can change the entire flow of the game depending on how you strategize and uh, set up your arsenal, your combo of, of cards. Um, and then you just go until somebody's out of arms. That's the basic gameplay. Yeah. When you guys uh, filmed that commercial, I was there all day and I said like two things. I just want to make sure the game is represented correctly. Uh, so I'd like to make sure which cards were there. Oh yeah, in the commercial, Chad and I only played three cards. But technically you play five cards. Yeah. So we'll, you'll notice that after we play the weapons and it cuts to the animation and comes back, we just have additional cards on the table that we never saw get played, just to represent the game. The dice chucking is especially realistic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Questions? Do you have any like game design questions? Or that's, that's why I kind of put the panel on the I know you came up to me. You talk beforehand. If you have any sort of questions like that. Do we have a... Oh, okay. We'll just go to the mic. Or you want to do a walk around thing? I go do a walk around. <laughs> there he goes. It's not a very large room, so we can just walk around the mic. Sean will save the day. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Yay, Sean. Yeah. 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 Yeah.